Dad, you have a face made for radio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, grizzled old man, get a job. And for my daughter, you don't know how many times you embarrassed me. <laughs> <laughs> Corey's the oldest, he's 32. He's almost married, just doesn't have time to quite get married, and he has <laughs> skills. He has a ski patrol avalanche guy, blows things up. Him and his fiance climbed an alley, the rangers on an alley, now they're in Antarctica leading the scientists around. He has skills. When he got his job in Stevens Pass in Washington State, he called me up, he said, hey, this place is steep. I went, come on, Corey, we've seen Tuckerman, Ravine, Colorado, Utah, even New Zealand. And then I go out with them. And as I'm on my fingertips of my snowboard going into a chute like this, I go, holy crap, this is steep. He says, that's payback, old man, for all the rectal pucker you gave me as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's my middle one. Ornery, we call him squirrel. And there's a saying in Vermont, and he's a chip off my wife's uh, reputation. And their reputation is, oh yeah, they may not be right, but they're never wrong. <laughs> they are stubborn people. <laughs> and he's a woodsman, and he worked in the woods as a kid, he worked in the woods on trail crew in New Hampshire, and he went to a forestry school. And he has that soft side to him, which is interesting. He learned to crochet. So he crocheted all these hats. He was a varsity, he was our varsity athlete. He crocheted for all the team members in this woodsman team. They cut wood, they threw wood, they chopped wood, they sawed wood. They were monsters. These guys were, and women were monsters. <laughs> One day, this other at a, at, a, at a woodsman meet, this guy comes over and mockingly said, so Ben, how come you're not knitting? So ben goes up to the guy and goes, grabs him, the colleague says, I don't effing knit. I effing crochet. <laughs> 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 he is a, just a burly guy who has now his own business in Vermont, had established it because when he was traveling in some Vercocta town in, in Europe, traveling in these, by himself, he's, he could go anywhere. He just said, hey, I want to start my business. He started his business. He bought a house. He has about 20 machines. Amazing. And he does well. Tree, tree climbs all the time. Our daughter, bless her heart, <laughs> was like Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farms growing up. And then she turned 14. And it was like Squeaky Frome from the Manson family. <laughs> I grew up with three brothers. And then I had two sons and my daughter. I had no idea what she was thinking. I could not figure that out for the life of me. But she survived all that teenage angst. Went to college, is in graduate school in New York City, doing art. And she's doing art that we have no idea what she's doing. The professors are crazy about her. She has great reputation, and the saying goes, if your parents understand your art, it can't be very good. <laughs> <laughs> but we have no idea. I guess it's really good. All these installations and designs, and we, we have no idea. So she survived my putting on her bathing suits backward. She survived my putting on sunscreen to make it look like a raccoon. She survived winter camping in, in the middle of Boy Scout troops, and she's doing really well. And what do I get for all this? All I get is grief for my kids. They tell me how grizzled I am, how slow I am on a snowboard compared to them. And they make sure I don't whine when I'm 
snowboarding or out with a day with them, so I don't need a cookie at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> the same goes, you could pick your, you could pick your friends, you could pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> but in our family, it's you could pick your friends, you could pick your nose, you can't pick your friend's nose, but you can pick on your family. <laughs>